Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Today we are going to do our first Masters of the Universe Repair Restoration and I'm quite excited because I always liked Skeletor <laughs> so when I found this figure I was pretty happy and I couldn't wait to get home and get started. So this particular toy is a Skeletor Terror Claws. It came with a few accessories and we're going to be recreating some of them today. Not all, but some uh, in 3D. I'm sorry in advance because I'm gonna make this Skeletor dance a lot. So I hope the video brings back some good memories or that you still enjoy making this Skelly feel a little better about himself because he definitely needs some love. <laughs> so let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is definitely a good clean. I'm going to start with some soap, dish soap. I'm also going to use this thing called Sif. I don't know if it has a different name in other countries. But it is basically a cleaning cream that has some like micro particles and it's really good for when you have dirt and oil. So you have to be careful because this is not something you should do to the painted areas where we're going to use it for the plastic. But let's start with the soap. And here is what it looks like after the soap. Definitely an improvement over the original state and it might be enough but we're going to keep going. We want to get rid of some of the, like I said, the areas that have some dirt and we're going to use the cream for this and then we're going to do one more thing but back to brushing. All right, and here is the result after the cream. It's not looking bad at all, but there is one more thing we can do. And this is something that if you watch my pony videos, you will be familiar with. If not, it might be a game changer, hopefully. And it's retro brighting. So we can make these two areas look the same. So sometimes I use hydrogen peroxide cream to do this process. However, in this case, we're going to use liquid because I have some leftovers from the Polly Pocket restoration. And what this is, is basically just a mix of water and hydrogen peroxide. Now you can put this under the sun and it will work or you can use a UV light if you live in a country that doesn't have much sun and that's what I would do. So here's what our Skeletor looks like while in the UV chamber. And about a day later, this is the result. And it's definitely an improvement over what we had before, so I'm very happy <laughs> that this worked. So let's celebrate with the dance. Now that we have gotten rid of all the dirt and some of the potential bacteria that was probably on this skeleton, we're going to repair the paint for the figure and for... I was going to say the accessories, we don't have the accessories yet. Is the belt an accessory? It's part of the figure. The figure. So anyway, <laughs> to do this I'm going to use acrylic paints mostly acrylic paints and a little experiment for the shiny part especially but I will tell you more about that when we get to it. <laughs> Let's start with the easy part which is the belt and I'm going to use this mix of reds. I try to use my acrylic pen with some of my acrylic paint. In the end the paint was actually a great match. So while we paint I'm going to tell you a little bit more about this toy. Alright so this is a Skeletor Terror Claws. 
The name comes from this clause that you can see here on screen. The toy was released by Mattel in 1985, but there is uh, a newer variant too. And from what I could read, there are also a couple of differences depending on the country. For example, there is one in Spain that has uh, lighter colored accessories, which I like and will replicate, <laughs> and a slightly different expression as well. And there's also a European version where the dino that we will see the weapon has an unpainted inner mouth. Well, by the way, I am so proud of this paint mixing moment <laughs> where I was able to match the skeleton and yeah. The fact that I felt that there was some green in there, <laughs> this is so silly, but I'm really proud. I'm really proud, what can I say? But let's go back to history. Uh, one thing I really like about this toy is that it's called, or some people have called it one of the most flamboyant uh, Masters of the Universe toys. And I kind of agree because <laughs> Skeletor has always had an interesting personality in my opinion. This is not a big surprise, but anyway. I wanted to tell you a bit more about the concept for this toy because I found a really interesting uh, resource that you can see in the description from Battle Ram blog. Um, it has so much information and pictures, I fully recommend you take a look. So let me summarize. So the original concept design was apparently made by Alan Tyler. You can actually see this image in the Power and Honor Foundation catalog. And there is also this interesting T-Rex concept art that seems to have the same armor, although unpainted. And there is one thing that makes this toy quite special, apart from the coolness of the accessories, and it's that it was actually the first variant to have newly sculpted parts. Now, of course, the hands were also modified so he could wear the claws, and he had some bigger toes and ball joint legs, which means that we can actually wash the skeleton in water and it won't like rust from the inside. Uh, but here is a picture of the 1986 Mattel catalog. And here is the 1985 card, but what I wanted to mention is actually the back of the card because it is absolutely beautiful and it's an illustration or a series of illustrations by Errol McCarthy, I hope that's how you pronounce the name, and you can read more about him in the link in the description. But he actually did the majority of the Masters of the Universe card back art and lots of other things, some of which you can see here. But there is a lot so if you don't know this person please take a look at the link because it will blow your mind <laughs> so back to skeletor <laughs> you could also get this figure as part of a set that also included flying fists he-man and of course there is also the comic now the comic you might remember um it's called the terror claws strike and it tells the story of skeletor ordering a new weapon the claws <laughs> and the claws in the comic look similar to the toy although the armor is a bit different but there is definitely a continuity there and i just want to say the comics look so so good and i think there goes my money here come the comics because <laughs> i want to read all of them now and if you had these toys you probably remember me as a girl who was usually gifted girls toys i wasn't too familiar with them like i had some shira like playing cards but no Masters of the Universe toys, but you might remember that this used to come with some mini comics. The comics were written by Don Glatt and illustrated by Alfredo Alcala, and there were four stories in booklet form, and they had one image per page with some text underneath. Now that was the first release in 1981, and then there were other waves, for example the second one, they had a different writer and illustrator, and eventually Mattel started using these mini comics for other toy lines, magazines, and they started making the characters with DC characters, so it's, it's a whole world out there. Okay, so let's go back to the video. I will explain what I was trying to do here, and then I will leave you maybe with a little bit of music until the results. Because unfortunately this didn't work, <laughs> so I was trying to recreate this armor shiny metallic purple-ish color but I honestly have no idea how this color is created <laughs> I tried so many things I tried acrylics I tried mica powder I tried chrome paints nothing worked I know you can get to this color with uh, spray paint maybe but I thought okay you know what <laughs> this is beyond my abilities for the moment let's leave it as it is because I don't want to damage it more and it's just a tiny battle uh, mark next step is 3d printing these parts i bought these parts online 
uh, I didn't want to use the original accessories, I wanted to see if I could actually recreate them with the printer and they work quite well. So first we're going to slice them, put them in the printer, clean the prints and then we're going to paint them.
All right, we are ready to see the results. Here is the before. Poor Skeletor possibly abandoned somewhere in the garden. <laughs> and here is our repaired version. And as you can see, the paint, the color is much more uniform. The paint seems to have covered all the little details. Let's do some celebratory dances. <laughs> little look at the before again. Lots of dust and grime. And here is he with the claws. Like I said, I left a lighter color because I thought you could see the details more. And lots of dancing. And here is the weapon, a little dinosaur. And it actually worked. I was so surprised to see this working. <laughs> so yeah, I can say I'm pretty happy with the result. Oh, here is the weapon in some detail. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did with dancing skeleton claws. <laughs> yeah, and this is what I would have done if I had this toy when I was a kid. So I will see you in the next one. Let me know what you think about this Masters of the Universe project. And have a great week. Bye bye. Ah.